I want to talk about different categories of books that I think you should read for software engineering. There's a broad category of, you know, of, of topics that you should probably be generally knowledgeable about when you enter this career. Uh, some of the categories include databases, cloud technologies, uh, front end technologies, back end technologies. And um, for me, my front end technology, I specifically tried to learn React. And I got a couple of React books and I learned that. For the back end, I learned .NET. And I got, again, a few .NET books and I went through that. For databases, I learned MySQL. And then I just got like the, you know, teach yourself SQL in, in 10 minutes type of books. And then I got some more like relational database books that went into like the the theory of, of, of databases. Uh, I actually read one that was interesting. It talked about how we treat time as its own entity in databases and the benefits of breaking a timestamp up into uh, in each in its own entity, meaning hours, minutes, seconds, and so forth. And then you can use that uh, as, as a e more easily searchable thing because dealing with date time in databases can kind of be a pain and it also can be very intensive, especially in larger queries. Um, the last category was uh, cloud and I focused on AWS. So I actually got the AWS Certified Developer book. Uh, it's about a thousand page book and I read that and I'm actually in the process of rereading it because my original plan was I wanted to get the AWS Certified Developer certification, but I just, I just never, I just never did it. And I, I read the book and I studied but I just never took the test. And now I just, I just don't know if it's worth it. I, I kind of want to get it just because like I, I studied for it and I put the time in and I read the book to, to, to do it, but uh, you got to pay a fee. And I just am worried about not passing it. Then I got to repay. I don't, I don't know. I just don't know if it's worth it professionally, but regardless, I learned a lot by reading it and it got me familiar with a lot of cloud services uh, that a lot of them are unique to AWS, but some of them kind of, you know, the lines are kind of blurred when you start talking about uh, cloud services, because most of the major cloud providers have kind of their equivalents, right? You know, AWS has Lambda, Azure has their equivalent, AWS has uh, their, their, let's, let's say like, I'm trying to think of what it, their, their database technologies, Azure has the same, and then there's a lot obviously between that. Um, but I think that covering those, again, cloud, front end, back end, and database will at least give you kind of like a broad scope of, of understanding for entering into this career field. Um, outside of that, you can kind of pick more like niche areas of interest. Uh, and the niche areas of interest that I chose to learn were was queuing technologies, specifically uh, RabbitMQ, uh, as as a message broker, so there's a there's a couple books um, written about RabbitMQ. The one that I read was RabbitMQ in depth, uh, and that book was was outstanding. That was an extremely good book. Who was that book written by? Uh, let's see. That was by Gavin M. Roy. So that was a really good resource. Again, it's it's in uh, if you go to Manning Publishers, you'll see it listed in that. Um, another niche technology that I tried to at least try to get some interest in was cryptography. So there's like kind of a famous book that's called Applied Cryptography. It's kind of like the classic book written about uh, all these crypt like cryptographic algorithms. But I'll be honest. I just do not like crypto. I just have no interest in that stuff. I tried to have an interest in it. I just didn't. <laughs> like, I just don't find it interesting in the least. But I felt like I should have a general knowledge of that stuff. So if you're interested in that, once you once you cover your 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 four main categories, maybe check that out as a, as kind of like a niche category to learn about. Um, another kind of obscure category that you can kind of you can kind of get into is quantum programming. Uh, it's it de it depends how you like 
how you want to learn because you, you're not really going to have access to a true quantum computer. Uh, uh, and if you do, it's going to be outrageously expensive. I, I think some of the cloud providers have like allow you access to, to send code to it, but I think it's just ridiculously expensive, at least the last time I checked. There's some pseudo quantum computers like that act, that just kind of simulate quantum activity uh you can use those and you can run quantum uh like algorithms and code and stuff it, it just it just breaks my brain every time that i even th look at some of the rudimentary stuff that's that's being input into those because i mean it's just thinking about the superpositions and and, and just the gates and um what, what was the other one um entanglement oh my goodness I mean, thinking about entanglement literally just hurts my brain. I mean, it's it's just a wild concept. So, but uh, there's there's research jobs out there for you know quantum uh, computing, quantum pro uh, quantum programmers, I guess you want to call it. There's research jobs that exist. I think you have to have some pretty high you know level education to get those. But again, it's out there if you want to do it. So. I try to at least familiarize myself with like concepts. Not that I'm gonna, not that I'm gonna ever do that, or you know, not that I'm smart enough to do that in the least. But I felt like it'd be a fun book to read, uh, and I I started to read it, but it's it's just super, <laughs> it's it's just wild. I it, at least for me, it it just that stuff just hurts my brain. <laughs> um, another kind of subcategory you can get into is data structures but data structures is a fascinating category because you can go back like 50 years ago and read papers introducing uh you know data structures and and talking about concepts of like uh fat nodes and you know how do we maintain state in data structures and how do we make these uh immutable data structures that have uh the entire data collection in each node and it's just it's very neat uh there's a lot of like there you can get a text you can get textbooks from like the 80s mcgraw hill has um series that you can get for computer science from the 80s uh some of those touch on data structures um that that one I think learning that and, and 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 starting to read more of that helped me to think through. It, it, it helped me to think about programming in a little bit different way. It, it, not that not that I am I feel like I'm directly like using that stuff, you know. At least not like at least me knowing I am, but I felt like it just. I don't know. It did something. You know what I mean? Have you ever guys ever read like data structure stuff? Like it, I don't know. It's just kind of neat to think about. Uh, the one, the one I felt like it kind of helped me with was, uh, watching the lectures, um, when they were talking about memoization, uh, and different algorithms and stuff like that. I feel like just always going back and watching those, uh, is that, is that Stanford or is that Harvard? I forget. One of those posts YouTube lectures uh, that you can go back and watch from like 10 years ago. They're super good. I mean, I, I sometimes I go back to watch those just as like, honestly, a refresher uh, just, to, just to stay up to date with that stuff. Because I feel like algorithms and data structures is like the first thing that I always forget. And it, it's hard to retain that because you're not, at least for me, I'm not. I'm not writing that stuff a lot, so, um, but it's good to know for sure. Uh, another one, another subcategory of kind of knowledge that you can kind of, you can kind of go on, uh, it's all in your own rabbit trail on is uh, distributed systems or distributed computing. Now that one's going to help you out, especially when you couple that with databases and how do you handle distributed transactions? How do you maintain uh, consistency across databases? Those are massive topics. That you can explore, uh, you can get you can get some serious textbooks written on that topic. I mean, a thousand pages, and and read it and try to understand it. I feel like that's another one that just kind of hurts my brain. 
Um, I'm very thankful for the modern technologies we have that have helped us to get around some of those issues a little bit. Um, but it's interesting, you know, when you start reading about that stuff and you start reading about like how some of that has not been solved and how we, we are still trying to find ways to make data consistent, you know, across, uh, you know, nodes, uh, you know, different instances of databases and stuff. It's, it's very fascinating. Um, but again, that's, yeah, and when, whenever you, I feel like whenever you start reading about locks on databases and then distributed locks and named locks and that stuff is just you're you're getting into you're getting into some in some very technical stuff very quickly. Um, you know, it's it's always harder to work with stuff that's harder to reproduce locally. You know what I mean? It's hard to reproduce a race condition. Uh, it's hard to reproduce sometimes like a deadlock scenario in a database locally. Um, but that stuff does happen. So I feel like just being knowledgeable of that is is helpful. Um, I personally, I would, I, 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 I personally, I think I would still stick with like the four big categories, at least for getting a job initially. So front end, back end, database and cloud. Once you've kind of gotten that at least uh, to a point where you can are fluent in that stuff and you feel like you can write your applications uh, at, at a level where you're, you're comfortable with, then I might go and explore some other categories. But I feel like if you try to learn that all like all of that all at once, it might be overwhelming and it might lead you to burn out faster. Um, if that makes sense, at least that's what what happened to me. I, sometimes that that's sometimes that's part of the reason I like books is because I find that sometimes when I look up a lot of documentation or different resources online, next thing I know I have like ten tabs open, but I really haven't read all of one of those tabs, uh, and it just can kind of become overwhelming, and it, it it almost can become a little discouraging for whatever I'm working on at the time. And I feel like books force me to read 100% about a topic in a very isolated environment, meaning I'm just reading this book. If I'm if I'm reading on a tab and I switch tabs, you know, then it's it's I'm I'm just my brain's trying to do too many things at once. Books are a way for me to try to fully devote my attention to a singular topic and. Again, there's a lot of good books, but there's also a lot of bad books. And I think it just takes reading enough to figure out what are the bad ones and what are the good ones. I've read some good ones and I've read some bad books. And I think it just takes develop building up your own library and figuring out, well, first of all, figuring out what you want to read about after you've kind of covered those four main categories. But second of all, figure out, you know, what are you looking for in a book? Are you looking for a uh, tutorial book that you can follow along with? Are you looking for a very theoretical book that you can just kind of think about? Are you looking for a very academic book that kind of uses more abstract terminology that's not that's not very applicable in like a practical coding sense outside of like concepts and ideas? Or are you looking for, uh, you know, something that's talking about um, like a like or if you look or if you're looking for an old book something that's talked about like the introduction of a technology that we kind of take for granted now so I, I it's really up to you I think what you want to read about um, but there's a lot out there and I think that uh, there's a lot we there's a lot we can learn from reading especially the older computer science books and just seeing how far we've come and seeing what problems still exist. So anyway, I hope that um, this was helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next one.